Hi, this is a video de uh, detailing some of the things I did to create my pomp and circumstance video. The outpouring of, of uh, love and support I've gotten for this video has really encouraged me to, to make this and also to, to pursue some other things I've had. I, I've been dreaming for a while to create some content to put out um, that I feel like there's maybe a, a hole missing in the, uh, in the YouTube world. So with your support by subscribing, perhaps going to my Patreon page, that's down below, and um, we, can, we can pursue this together. I'm, I'm looking to do all kinds of things. Um, for one, I, I'm an instrumentalist. I've always loved playing instruments. Um, everything from the band instruments you see in the Pomp and Circumstance video to um, harmonica and guitar. And I'd love to create some very simple, easy, straightforward lessons on how to start those instruments because I think everybody can, can play an instrument and pursue that. Uh, and I've got lots of lots of things that I'd like to do, including some charity things. Um, and, and in order to do that, I need you to um, start with just pressing subscribe. Uh, anyway, I want to do a real, I want to try to keep this really short. Um, this de this description of how I made this video. If you would like to for me to go into more detail, I need you to comment. And if you um, if you if I get enough comments, then I'm gonna I'm gonna go into some of the specific details on how I recorded them. All right, so let's get into that video. So I recorded all of the video on my iPad, and I recorded all the I audio on a program called GarageBand on my Mac, uh, my MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro had a, a Poggy 96K microphone plugged into it. That sounds really fancy, but uh, I don't. I just bought a microphone that plugged into my computer. It turns out I bought the right one, so it's a good microphone. Uh, the some things to think about before you start up. Your backdrop is really important. I kept this backdrop the way it is um, because I honestly didn't want to do the work of shuffling my things around to to get a better backdrop. But I want to show you what doing some simple things can can really do. Um, so backdrop wise, I'm going to move my computer this way. This black fabric that you see on the screen, on the on my left side there, uh, that fabric really does a lot for a video. And I'd like to show you what I mean by sharing this desktop and showing you a little. So by having that black backdrop, it goes from a messy office area into um, almost a studio look. Um, so a really, really simple thing, just some black fabric hung up on a wall and all of a sudden, boom, it looks a little bit more professional. All right, so that's really important. Also lighting is really important. I've got a very bright light in, in front of me right now. Um, if I had this on all day, it would it would blind me, but I'm just have it on for this recording because it lights up my face well. If I turn it off, it looks terrible. And so really a simple light, um, and this is uh, one I bought on Amazon. If you're curious about the exact model, you can let me know. Um, also, I did a little real quick little tape job there and block that light because for some reason it created this like laser beam going through my face of light. So just some real simple things, um, a few minutes of getting clever with your materials and you can create excellent lighting and a good setting for your, your videos. Uh, also last thing is be thoughtful about how you're saving your videos because, um, and, and images because uh, all that stuff is automated by numbers and it gets really easy to quickly lose track of where was that trombone part. So take some time and save it so that you, you know what, where, where, what files are where. All right, so let's take a look then at GarageBand and talk about some of the reasons that I used GarageBand when making this video. So I'm gonna share again my screen and let you see over here my GarageBand track. So this is the actual track I use for Pomp and Circumstance. I like GarageBand. I feel like it's very straightforward. I'm not a real, I, I like technology, but I'm not really techie at the same time. Uh, I need things that are easy to understand. If I don't understand them, I get rid of them. I don't use them again. 
GarageBand is a really easy tool to use. I, some things I liked about it uh, I didn't, that I didn't even know about beforehand is you can import video into this. You can put one video on the screen. I chose a conductor, my conducting track, because it helped me keep track of the parts. Uh, it wasn't actually the first track I did. The first track I did was the tuba part. All right. Um, also, using GarageBand enabled me to edit small pieces. So if you see all these lines in the blue there, those are all edit points where I, after I recorded the entire video, right, mistakes and all on the video, because you can't really tell on video if I'm doing the right fingering or not. I went back in the audio and I was able to splice in all these little spots, like even this one right here, that's two measures of where I had some kind of mistake in the bassoon part. Right. So in order to get that little splice in there, I just found the point I wanted to start at. I click this one, two, three, four up there because it's going to give me a lead in four measure lead in for right now. We're just going to listen to the bassoon part. We press record and it's actually, I'm sorry, not a four measure, but a four beat lead in. Well, that was weird. Something jumped around there. I must have that in the wrong place. Let's try that again. Oh, I see. All right. And three, four, and now I get my recorded part. Um, I can either do it right in the spot like that, okay, or I can, I, a lot of times what I did is I just started a new track and I recorded onto the new track. So now I would record what I needed. And then all I simply just click and drag that into place. It's amazingly easy. Now, one piece of this you need to do is you need to make sure you have an earbud in for all the playing, not just the splicing one. If you do not have an earbud in, listen to what happens. So now I record what I needed. So the, the, the microphone picks up the computer audio, which is like a little bit of no duh, but Sometimes, sometimes that no dust stuff escapes us. So just thought I would share that with you. Um, we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to Final Cut Pro now. So after I recorded all the audio, I balanced it the way I wanted using these knobs. Um, and then I exported it out as an audio file. It's a really, really easy process. A couple clicks, make sure you save it with the title that you want. And then we bop over to um, Final Cut Pro. Now, I can't really show you much of that pomp and circumstance video because um, on, maybe unsurprising to anybody that's done things like this, the day before I was going to put this out, I, I lost the original um, Final Cut project. Luckily, I had enough of pieces saved that I was able to splice it together. Um, so I can't really show you that, but I'll, I'll show you a buildup of that um, of those parts. But before I do that, I want to share with you two things I wish I had done differently. One of the things I didn't do is add a clap track point. And you're going to see why that's important in a moment. But let me show you what it looks like to have a clap track. I, of course, did not have this open. So um, this is a this is a video my students made. Uh, I, I will edit this part out eventually. We have a clap track. One, two, three, four. If everybody does their job right, that clap track means that's the only thing you have to line up. You find that spike in sound and you drag it and you line up all those spikes in sound. And, and that vocabulary might not make sense to you, um, but I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Before, before I get to that, I want to show you one other thing I wish I had done that I did on this project with my students. I took a background from Final Cut Pro, which are found here. I'll just use a black one for right now. And I, I placed that into Final Cut Pro. I trimmed it down the size that I wanted to create a straight line and edging a frame. All right, so that that seems really easy, right? 
and maybe even pointless. But if but if you look at the quality of this video, so if I had known the world was going to be watching, I maybe would have tried to figure this out. I spent a lot of time getting these things even close to being perfect. You can see a gap in a black space there. You can see over here on the bassoon part that it's not edged the right way. So by adding this frame in, you, you, you eliminate that. Um, now there's some details with that that I'm not going to go into because I am trying to keep this video pretty short and straightforward. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and make a new project so that you can see what a new project looks like in, um, oh, there, that's right, I did a test run and now we need a new test run number two. So you can see what a, a project looks like in Final Cut Pro. This is exposing the secrets because you're gonna see how easy this is once you put the things into place that you need to do. Um, you kind of do your prep work, so to speak. I'm just gonna click and drag a background here. Um, it's kind of like a space holder for later. Um, I don't want to have any of my video files go there. And the first thing I drag in will go there if I don't do this. All right, so let's start with that conducting file comp and circumstance conducting all right now um really all you do is you click and drag these things in and for right now we're just going to add um how about the trumpet one because Actually, you know what? We'll be, yeah, we'll do the, well, let's do the snare drum. There we go. They, he starts right away. This guy starts right away. So let's take a look then at what it looks like just to have these two videos. So now I want to talk to you about a few things. One is up here in this window is where we can drag things around and move them where you want. One thing I discovered is that if you have your computer set up right, a two finger tap gives you the options to transform, which is a sizing thing. So I can do that and create different sizes. Um, and also the ability to crop, which is, you know, cutting out certain parts of the video. That two tap thing is really important. And then the other thing is up here, um, in these dials, if you are taking the same size video, you know, like they're all landscape or they're all portrait from the same device, you can actually scale them all in the exact same percentage and you can get, you can get the same size videos. Actually, I didn't do that one, did I? 29%, by the way, is what I found really worked well um, in a lot of the videos that I did. So, I think we should talk about the placement of parts here. I, again, I didn't do a clap track. If I did a clap track, you would see a spike in the sound, which looks like these waves here, and I would just line them up, and it's crazy easy. Because I didn't do that, I'm going to have to do some real finagling here with the parts. So we'll watch. I'm going to watch the director here. Think that. Yeah, right there. Let's see if we can get him to conduct his snare drummer. We're going to make those parts bigger so that you can see them better. All right, so let's see if our, our guys line up here. All right, so we're going to press play. Okay, so I'm a little bit off. So this is the problem with not having the clap track. Um, apparently, I need to move this over this way. So learn from my mistakes. Right there is the downbeat. So now we should be pretty good. Let's see if we're conducting it. Boom, there we go. So now this, now the, the, all the video will be aligned from beginning to end. 
again, you, you can see like, because that was probably super boring to watch, super boring to do about, you know, 30 times as well. So if you add that clap track in, if you're thinking ahead to that, uh, it saves you a load, a load, a load of time. Um, the volume adjust is a really important thing too. Um, let's, if you look down here, that is a that is showing us like the volume of that recording, and if you if you look really close, you can see that there's times where it gets yellow or red, and that's a bad sign. You want to make sure you keep all of your parts down in volume. Now, because I did all the parts in GarageBand. Actually, don't have to worry about that on this project. I just turned them all off and I imported my audio file from GarageBand and did the same synchronizing of parts there. Um, I won't show you that because it's a, it's really the same thing. Yeah, and the only other thing I was going to tell you about is because of the um, computer I have, it's got very little storage and the um, the operate, I don't know, I, I'm not like I'm not a tech person, like I said before, but the the guts of it are not the newest and fastest thing. I ran into several problems creating this video because there was so much information going in. So I, I did come up with some workarounds um, and I wish I could show them to you, but I just I don't have that ability because I lost the files, but I made um, just the top row. I made a video with just the top row parts and exported that. So now instead of being six separate videos, it's just one. And then the same with the second row and the third row. And then I was able to take those three videos in together. So in the end, instead of having, um, you know, maybe 30 videos playing in one, on one system and overloading it, I, I really simplified it and dropped those tracks into one. I hope this helps. I hope this is interesting. Um, I'm certainly going to get better at this as I go along. Uh, if, if you would please press subscribe. And if you're really intrigued about what's down the road and you want to even give me some input, use, uh, subscribe, or use my Patreon. Click on Patreon and visit and, um, and give as you would there. So thank you so much. I look forward to doing more with you down the road.